Short rows are really fun ways to add shaping to your projects, and I use the German short rows for a lot of my ribbed short rows or stockinette stitch short rows. So I use them for this striped pup sweater, and sometimes you could use them for the back neck of your stockinette stitch short rows as well for sweaters. So let's learn how to do the German short row and apply it to projects like the striped pup sweater. When you're working the German short row technique in my patterns, it says to knit or purl, and then it says to turn to work the other side. So I just purled two for this ribbing. You might just knit two, and then it says turn to work the other side. So turn to look at the other side. Slip one with yarn in front. So bring the yarn forward if it's not already. Slip one with that yarn in front, and then place the yarn on top of your right needle and pull it downward to reveal two strands of yarn on the right needle. So when you slip one with yarn in front, you pull it on top of the right needle like this, and then you're gonna see these two strands of yarn. This is the German short row technique. Now, after you do that, and you see those two strands of yarn on your right needle, see what you have to do next. Does the pattern say to knit one? I'm, I need to knit one for my ribbing, but you might have to purl one. So if you just did that, you purled the yarn, to on top of the needle, you might have to purl one. So bring the yarn forward between that gap. And for stockinette stitch, you might have to purl all your stitches on the wrong side. I need to knit, so I'm gonna do that again. So after you work one side, turn to look at the other side, bring the yarn forward, and slip one with yarn in front, Bring that yarn on top of the right needle, not through that gap, on top of the right needle, and I need to knit one for my ribbing. And that's all there is to it. Or you might need to purl one by bringing the yarn forward to purl the next stitch. And you see those two legs on that slipped stitch? That's normal. It looks weird, but keep on going. And I'm gonna do that once more. So let's say, do, 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 do. let's say I need to turn my work now. So let's look at that again. Slip one with yarn in front, and then pull that yarn downward to reveal two strands. One more time. I'm gonna hold the yarn in my right hand for you English style knitters. Slip one with yarn in front. Make sure the yarn is in front. Slip one, pull the yarn downward on top of that right needle to reveal two strands of yarn. And then continue to work your pattern your ribbing or your knit stitches or purl stitches. So that counts as one stitch. So let me do one more turn here. I'm gonna slip one with the yarn in front, pull that yarn on top of the right needle. Now I'm gonna purl that stitch. So let's do one more. I'm gonna do one more turn. So now I'm gonna show you how to close the gaps. Okay, so I did some of my German short rows. Now when the pattern says to knit or knit purl it all the way across until, uh, or it says to knit two, purl two while closing the gaps. So when you're reaching the gaps, look, I'm knitting. <gasps> look at that. Do you see those two strands of yarn? It looks really weird, but it's coming from one stitch, but those are the two strands. That counts as one stitch. So when you reach that situation, you need to work those stitches together like that. So I knitted those stitches together because I'm doing some ribbing. Knit, just like that. And now I need to purl. Oh, there's another one. Do you see that? Do you see those two strands of yarn on the needle? You're gonna feel it, it looks weird. If you wanna mark each of those with a stitch marker when you do your turns, that might help. But I'm gonna purl those two together because I'm doing ribbing. Look how beautiful that is. You can't even see that closure, it's nice and seamless. So I close those on the right side, and then in my ribbing, the other ones that happen on the other side, I'm doing short rows symmetrically, so I close those on the wrong side. So if you're working the wrong side, and it says to knit two, purl two while closing the gaps, or purl across the wrong side while closing those gaps, Look at that. Do you see those two strands of yarn coming from one stitch? I'm doing my ribbing, so I need to knit those strands together. Just like that. Purl. Oop, there's another one. 
Do you see that? Those two strands of yarn? Purl those two together like this. And then keep on working your ribbing or purling across your row. And that's going to close them really nice and they're going to look really seamless for those German short rows. Here's a sample of my striped pup sweater of those German short rows. I love doing it for two by two ribbing and it looks really good in stockinette stitch as well. But here is where I closed all of those German short row gaps on the right side. And then I turned around and worked my ribbing over to that other side. And this is where I closed them by knitting those two strands together or purling those two strands together on the wrong side. So you can't really see where it happens and that's the point to get that nice solid fabric, smooth short rows using that German short row technique. All right, Stitch, what do you think about those German short rows? Do they work for you? Do they cover your tushy? So this is Stitch's German short rows and her ribbing. I think we're pleased. So those are really fun to use. Again, I like them for ribbing and stockinette stitch the best, but there's a lot of other short row techniques to try. So I'll link one of my other favorite short rows down below. It's the West Knits Shortcut Row which is the best one for garter stitch. Really, really easy, but give some other short row methods a try. And if you wanna try that German short row and knit yourself a striped pup sweater, your pup can look just as cute as little Stitch. So that's a new pattern that I have on Ravelry and Westknits.com. And there's a lot of other fun tutorials on my YouTube channel here if you want to check those out. And I also do a lot of workshops. So you could learn how to design your own shawl or knit some socks or play with color along with me with step-by-step -step workshop tutorials. And those are all at Westknits.com. So I hope to see you in one of my online workshops or we can learn some more here on my YouTube channel. So check out those videos and the links down below and we'll learn some more fun knitting tips and tricks together.